dropshipping or fulfilled by Amazon? Which one's better? Which one's better? Which one should you do? And most importantly, which one can make us more money? I need that money! Well, all of those questions will be answered in today's video. It's showtime. So if you've been considering whether to start an e-commerce business in Amazon FBA or in the dropshipping sector, well, make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because this video is going to answer pretty much any question that you may have. So first things first, where did I get the inspiration to actually make this video? Well, I've been seeing a lot of people comparing the two, but they've been favoring Amazon FBA for some of the dumbest reasons. The dumbest thing I've ever heard. Seriously, it's like these people have been working specifically with Amazon to be able to knock drop shipping and just get Amazon FBA and make it look like it's king. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's really not. But before we start with the dissection of Amazon FBA and drop shipping, I want you to tell me what you think about both, which one you prefer. Have you tried one or have you tried the other? Let me know down in the comments below. I really want to hear your thoughts on this because this is a pretty controversial topic in the e-commerce world. So let me know down in the comments below. So as I mentioned earlier, I've seen a lot of people picking and choosing different reasons for choosing Amazon FBA over drop shipping. And those reasons that they've been choosing, honestly, they don't make sense to me. Those reasons are completely outdated. So what exactly are some of the reasons that people are choosing? Well, for one, everyone is saying that drop shipping has extremely long shipping times, like 20 to 30 days. You could experience longer shipping times. This is outdated. Bro, come on, seriously, we're in the year 2023. If you're into drop shipping, if you've done any research at all, you should know by now that 20 to 30 day shipping times are a thing of the past. That's like 2018, 2019 era stuff. That is no longer applicable. And we all know that customers don't like that. At this point, pretty much any supplier that you're sourcing your items from, they're going to have some sellers that ship their items with extremely slow shipping. And yeah, they can take up to a month. But as a drop shipper, as a legitimate drop shipper, we already know that we're not choosing those suppliers. We're not choosing those sellers. We're looking for sellers with quicker shipping times. This day and age, we all know that we have to compete with Amazon. And while we can't directly compete with them, people are okay with waiting up to two weeks for their products. Most of the videos that I've seen online comparing the two are saying people don't want to wait two weeks. People don't want to wait one month. People don't want to wait one month, but people are okay with waiting two weeks. That's kind of standard. Not everyone is Amazon and the consumers understand that. But at the same time, you have to think about this. We're not targeting the people that are shopping on Amazon. We're targeting impulse buyers. Aside from that, people are also saying, Oh, there's no quality when it comes to drop shipping. Well, what about when it comes to Amazon FBA? How can you ensure quality if at the end of the day, you're not receiving the product yourself unless you actually order a sample, which is pretty much the same thing with drop shipping. Before you start Amazon FBA, you have the choice to order a sample just like with drop shipping. And that's highly recommended. Always order a sample regardless of the e-commerce business that you're starting. You want to make sure that your products are quality. And another thing that people are saying about drop shipping compared to FBA is it's oversaturated. Drop shipping is oversaturated. Really? At this point, we all know that pretty much any business, any e-commerce business is already oversaturated. It's just up to you to stand out. And let's be real, Amazon FBA, there's tons of sellers on there. There's a lot of people selling on there, selling the exact same thing. So if we're talking about oversaturation, then we have to be fair. Both business models at the end of the day are going to be fairly oversaturated. You just have to learn to market your products and stand out. Another dumb reason that I find over and over is the customer base people always reference the customer base. They say a customer is not going to make a purchase because they can find it cheaper on Amazon. Well, that's not necessarily the case because those customers are not the ones that we're targeting. Now let's get into what exactly is Amazon FBA and what exactly is drop shipping. Well, to start, let's start with Amazon FBA. Amazon FBA is essentially another order fulfillment method. So here's how it works. First, you need to decide on a product. Then you need to find a supplier for it. And honestly, it doesn't matter where you're sourcing it from. You can choose AliExpress, Ali Baba or your corner store or your local Walmart, whatever it may be. As long as you're able to source a product, you can do Amazon FBA. But here's the kicker. You need to purchase products beforehand. So what happens is you're going to end up ordering all of your products in bulk. And instead of having it shipped to your customer or to yourself, you're going to have it shipped directly to the Amazon warehouses. Now, Amazon is going to keep those items in their warehouse. They're going to store them. And whenever somebody places an order for that particular item on Amazon, they're going to go to your section, take that product and have it shipped. And the the good part about this that I am going to say is it is eligible for Amazon Prime. So it is going to have one to two day shipping, if not same day shipping. Now, what about drop shipping? Well, when it comes to drop shipping, it's simply another order fulfillment method. So what happens in this case is instead of going to Amazon, somebody's going to go to your website. Once they get on there, they're going to find a product that they like. They're going to place the order. And then instead of you fulfilling that order or packaging it, shipping it out, whatever it may be, what you're going to end up doing is just simply going to your supplier's website, whether that be AliExpress, eBay, Etsy, Walmart, 
Amazon, and then you're gonna have that supplier send the item directly to your customer. Then once you get the tracking number, all you have to do is update your customer and the platform that you're selling on, and that's it. So as you can see, both Amazon FBA and dropshipping are somewhat similar in the fact that you're not necessarily handling the inventory yourself. Somebody else is doing it for you, but they're different in the fact that for one, Amazon is handling one and the other one's being handled directly from the supplier. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into Amazon FBA. So when it comes to Amazon FBA, like I mentioned earlier, you purchase items in bulk, you send them directly to the Amazon warehouse, and then the orders are fulfilled directly from there when they're purchased from Amazon. Now that right there is one thing that you have to keep in mind. You're purchasing in bulk. And when you purchase in bulk, you're going to be putting down a pretty penny. You're going to be putting down some pretty good money because it's not going to be cheap to purchase this item in bulk or a lot of the same item. And it's also not going to be cheap to have it shipped all the way to the Amazon warehouse, depending of course where your supplier is. But typically speaking, most people are going to be sourcing their items from somewhere like AliExpress or Alibaba, because realistically speaking, those are some of the cheaper places to buy in bulk. But shipping in this case can be pretty expensive, depending on what you choose. So I shop a lot from Alibaba whenever I purchase in bulk for certain businesses that I have. And here's one thing that I've learned. Alibaba typically offers you two different types of shipping. For one, it's going to be air and two, it's going to be sea. If you choose air, it's definitely the fastest. It can take maybe a week to two weeks to get to wherever the destination is. But the price is almost four or five times as expensive as sea shipping. Now, sea shipping is going to be a lot cheaper, but it's going to be a lot slower. When I tell you a lot slower, I mean, it can literally take up to a month to two months, sometimes even three, because the supplier has to pack everything up, load it up on a boat. That boat has to wait to be filled up to the brim. They make sure that these boats are packed and then it starts to set sail. Now, imagine setting sail all the way from China to the US. A lot of the times these boats dock somewhere around New York. So for the most part, that's probably where it's going to go. And from personal experience, that can take anywhere between one to two months, because after the ship sets sail and then docks, it's not only about, oh, you know, the ship is here. Let's just unload everything and take it to where it's supposed to go. No, everything has to be inspected and everything has to clear customs. So that right there can take a lot longer. Trust me, customs are annoying. Now, of course, this can be avoided if you're doing Amazon FBA and you're sourcing the products yourself. So I know a lot of people that do retail arbitrage. So they'll go to their local Walmart or maybe a Marshall's or a Ross or something like that, somewhere where you can buy things for cheaper and they'll buy a bunch of the same item and then they'll ship it themselves to an Amazon fulfillment center. Then that's going to require you to actually get up and go look for those items yourself. And we all know that that can take a lot of time. And also that's not consistent. A lot of the times when you go to a Marshall's, which is actually my favorite place to go to because you can find a little bit of everything there, but you're not always going to find the same thing. And you're not always going to find the same quantity of the same thing either. So you're going to have to go to multiple stores to either find the same product or find multiples of the same product, or even just look for the same product because one week it'll be at a store and the next week it won't be there. Now, when you are sourcing these products from somewhere like AliExpress, a lot of the times people do not buy samples. They just find the item on AliExpress or Alibaba. They'll contact the supplier and then they'll order everything in bulk and they won't even know what they're selling. They won't know how the quality is. They won't know if the item works, if it looks good, if it feels good for whatever type of item that it is. They'll just order it in bulk, have it shipped to Amazon and essentially just pray that it all works out and that it's good. That's not how it works. If you order in bulk an item that is low quality and people start purchasing that on Amazon, you're going to start getting bad reviews and then people are not going to keep purchasing it because trust me, reviews are a very powerful thing. Of course, this can be remedied by simply ordering a sample. Reach out to the supplier, tell them what you're trying to do, whether it be drop shipping or Amazon FBA, and tell them that you want to make sure that the item is quality. You want to make sure that it's a good item before you put in a bulk order. Now, speaking about those bulk orders, as I mentioned earlier, it all has to be stored in the Amazon warehouse. And that's not for free. Amazon is going to charge you. One thing that I've noticed that a lot of people that promote Amazon FBA don't tell you is the fees. Oh, baby, the fees. So when it comes to fees for Amazon FBA, there are quite a few of them. Of course, there's a fee for whenever you sell, but then there's also storage fees. Now, those storage fees are actually going to vary. That's all going to depend on how much space you're taking up in their warehouse. It's going to depend on the weight. It's going to depend on the size. It's going to depend on essentially how much you're taking up in their warehouse. So let's say you're selling a few different supplements. Storing those is going to be a lot cheaper than storing, let's say, a bunch of different monitors, because obviously these weigh a lot less and they take up a lot less space. Now, these are monthly storage fees. So this is something that you're going to have to pay every single month as long as you're taking up space in their warehouse. If you're using Amazon FBA, if you have items in the Amazon warehouse, you are going to be paying a storage fee. Now, another thing that can factor into these fees is going to be peak times. So Amazon has this thing called peak and non peak times. Peak times would be when certain items are trending. Non peak times are when they're not trending and the prices for the storage fees are going to vary based on those times. So at one point throughout the year, the fee could be lower or higher than the other. Also, if you have an item in there or multiple items there that are not selling, 
or they've just been there for too long, Amazon is going to charge you what they call a long-term storage fee. So the long-term storage fee is going to be on top of your monthly fee. And the final one that I'm going to cover is if you decide you don't want to work with Amazon anymore, or you simply just don't want to sell a particular product on there anymore, and you want to send it back to yourself, to your warehouse, or wherever it may be, Amazon is going to charge you a fee for that. They actually have an inventory removal fee. So as you can see, there are a lot of fees when it comes to Amazon. And that's something that you really have to keep in mind because a lot of people don't know that there are so many fees associated with Amazon FBA. Now, when it comes to selling on Amazon, if you've scrolled Amazon before, which I'm sure pretty much every single person watching this video has, you know that they sell literally anything and everything. But did you know that in order for you to sell a little bit of anything and everything, you have to be approved? Yeah, you can't just start right away. You actually need to be approved to be able to sell on Amazon FBA. Not only do you need to be approved, but you also need to be approved per category. So when I first tried getting into Amazon FBA, I actually had a source for toys, but then I realized I can't sell toys because it's locked. You either have to reach out to Amazon to have them unlock it, or you have to prove to them that you're actually getting sales to start unlocking different tiers. It's pretty complicated the way that works, but just know that when it comes to selling different categories, you're going to be very limited, at least at the beginning. Now, if you're trying to start a brand or if you're trying to brand your items, Amazon FBA actually makes it a lot easier for you to do that. So as mentioned earlier, when it comes to Amazon FBA, you need to purchase your items in bulk and your suppliers actually prefer that primarily because they're not stuck with a bunch of inventory. But if you want to brand your items or brand the packaging, that's actually one thing that most suppliers are going to require. They're going to require you to purchase items in bulk so that way they can brand the items. And if for whatever reason they don't sell, that's not on them. They made their money. The one that's losing out is you. So purchasing items in bulk and having them shipped to Amazon can make it a lot easier to actually brand your items and start working on your own brand. So now let's move over to drop shipping. Now, when it comes to drop shipping, let's talk about fees. As we said earlier, when it comes to Amazon FBA, there's a ton of different fees. When it comes to drop shipping, there are also a few fees, but they can be lessened depending on how you're going about it. So let's say if you start drop shipping on, let's say Shopify, and you want to do it on your own website, then you can start drop shipping for just a dollar or just a couple bucks more than a dollar because they have a trial period that starts you off for one dollar for three months. And actually, if you want to check that out, just check out the description down below. There's going to be a link down there for you to get started with your trial for Shopify drop shipping. But beside that, whenever the trial ends, it does become a subscription fee, which can translate to about $30 a month, of course, depending on the subscription that you get. Now that can actually be lessened to pretty much for free. So check this out. You can go to eBay. You can drop ship on eBay without a problem. eBay has nothing against drop shippers. Depending on your account, sometimes they might ask you for an agreement or for a sales receipt. That's pretty easy to get. Just reach out to your supplier and they can help you out with that. But when you're selling on eBay, you don't have to pay absolutely anything. If you have a standard account, a regular buyer account, you can start selling on eBay literally for free. The only time that you have to pay anything is whenever a sale is actually made. When a sale is made, you do have to pay a final value fee and that's going to depend on the product category. So that can vary a little bit, but that's only going to be a one-time fee that you're going to pay per sale. Now, as you can see, the startup cost for Amazon FBA versus dropshipping, dropshipping is a lot lower than Amazon FBA. With dropshipping, you don't have to purchase your items in bulk. Now, if you do want to start your brand, if you want to start branding your items and all that stuff, then yeah, you're going to have to purchase your items in bulk, get with your supplier, see how much that's going to cost you, see how much they're going to charge you to store it. But for the most part, if that's not what you're trying to do, if you're not trying to start a brand, if you're just trying to start a regular dropshipping store, then the startup costs for dropshipping are going to be pretty low. They can be anywhere from a few dollars to maybe $30 to zero. Now, for some reason, when it comes to dropshipping, everyone in the videos I was watching only reference Shopify and Shopify is not the only platform for you to dropship on. Well, yes, it is an awesome website to get started on and it makes it super easy to make your own website. That's not your only option. People talk about Shopify and they think that it's not the best way to go about it because you have to start marketing your products. You have to start marketing on Facebook ads. You have to do UGC or user generated content. And while yes, that is the case, it's not that bad. I don't know why people complain about it that much because think about it this way. When you're selling on Amazon, what is going to differentiate your product from all of the other products on there that are the exact same thing? Aside from maybe a couple of different product pictures, maybe a video or two and the descriptions, nothing, right? Well, when you're marketing your own product and you're selling on your own website, you can make your marketing as creative and as unique as you want. Look, right now we're in 2023. We're getting into 2024. TikTok and Instagram reels right now are absolutely blowing up and they are not slowing down. And, and people are finding great success marketing their products on there for completely free. Just make a couple videos, make them unique, make them fun, be crazy, be wild about it. And chances are these videos could take off and reach millions and millions of viewers. If that happens, link them to your profile, link them to the link in your bio and boom, you're going to get some people clicking on your website. But again, that's not your only option to dropship on. You can dropship on eBay. And when you're selling
selling on eBay, it's kind of like selling on Amazon. Of course, it's a little bit different when it comes to the fulfillment and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, you're selling on a platform. And eBay, of course, is not just your only option. Or you can drop ship on Etsy, or contrary to popular belief, you can even drop ship on Amazon. Yes, there's definitely ways to go about it if you're careful. Now, one absolutely huge benefit that you have when it comes to drop shipping is the fact that you can implement automation. And when you start to implement automation, you can pretty much start to become hands off with the entire process. So one big part about automation that can help you out is finding the best products and actually importing them to your store. If you do this manually, it can really take you a long time, but let me quickly show you how this can be done. So right now we're over at AutoDS and of course you are going to need an account for this, but if you're not signed up for AutoDS just yet, you can start right now for just $1 for the trial period. Now, once you're signed up and you're signed on, then you have access to quite a few different resources. So for one, you have the marketplace and you have the wedding products. Here you have tons of different products, all of which are currently trending and have been proven to sell in the past. This is all backed by years of data, all gathered by professional dropshippers. Now, as you can see, there's a ton of different products on here, all in a variety of niches, but let's quickly take a look at the winning product section. All right, so right now we're at the winning product section. And as you can see here, there again are tons of different products in a wide variety of niches. Now let's check something out really fast and let's check out the keyboard map. So this right here, you can see ships between two to 10 business days. That's not bad at all. That is definitely within the two weeks shipping range that I talked about earlier. So let's go ahead and click into this. And once you're in here, you get quite a bit of information. So for one, you got all of the different variations that you can go ahead and import into your store. You have the different colors, the different sizes, where it ships from. And if you scroll down, you can see a little bit more information. So for one, you have a profit analysis, so you can get an idea of how much you can actually sell this product for. Aside from that, you also get a target audience and a Facebook ad that's currently running with this same product. So if you don't know how to market your items, then this can really help you start to structure them. This can give you an idea of how you can start to get this done. And the target audience can help you target appropriate demographic. Aside from that, let's say you're not very good when it comes to designing your own website, selling on Shopify, for example, a lot of people aren't necessarily the best when it comes to designing me being one of them. It's, it's really hard for me to design. It's just not in me. So something like this is a huge help. You get the link to a website that's actually selling this same product. So you can check out the website, see how they have it structured and start to structure yours similar to theirs or just use it as more or less of a guide. But aside from that, look how easy it is for me to import this product to my store. If I want to sell this one, all I have to do is this click done. That's all it takes. Now this product is in my store ready for me to make any adjustments to it. Let's say I want to make any adjustments to the title or the description, maybe even the images or the prices. And then I can set it to go live on my store and it'll be ready to sell within literally minutes. Now you can't do that with Amazon FBA. While at the end of the day, when it comes to the actual order fulfillment, you're not going to be doing much because of course, Amazon's going to be taking care of the entire thing. You're not going to be able to automatically import your products. So let's say you have 10 or 20 different products that you want to import into your Amazon store. You need to do all of that manually. And trust me when I say that doing these things manually, it's fine when you're doing one or two different products. But when you start getting into the higher numbers, even 10s, 20s, 30s, it can start to take a long time. So let's address the elephant in the room and let's find out which one is better, Amazon FBA or dropshipping. Well, I hate to do this to you, but honestly, it's at the end of the day, it's really going to depend on you. Both business models are great business models. They both work when done correctly. You need to do the proper research for each business model because each one is unique in its own way. What works with Amazon FBA won't work with dropshipping. And some people are going to prefer Amazon FBA because it's just a lot easier for them. You know, you don't have to make a website. You don't have to market. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Or some other people are going to prefer dropshipping because it's a lot easier to get started in. It's a lot cheaper to get started in. And at the end of the day, you have a bit more freedom in it. The reason I say that you have a bit more freedom is because you can market the products the way that you want. You can structure your website, your pages, however you want. But don't take my word for it take these things that I'm about to talk to you about into consideration when you're making your decision. So for one really important, you need to take into account the cost to start and how much it's going to cost you to keep the business going. Remember, when you're working with Amazon FBA, you're going to have storage fees. And on top of that, you're going to have to purchase your items in bulk. And if those items don't sell, you're going to have to pay long term storage fees. When it comes to drop shipping, you don't necessarily have those same fees, but you are going to have a few other different fees. For one, you can have subscription fees, which of course, like I said earlier, 
is going to come in the form of monthly subscription fees for let's say Shopify to continue using their platform and you're also going to have transaction fees so whenever somebody makes a purchase the credit card company is going to take their cut from that typically that's about what 2.3 percent something like that you also have certain selling fees depending on the platform so eBay will have something like their final value fee while Etsy is going to have transaction fees seller fees and some other fees there the fees are all really going to be dependent on the platform that you're selling on but generally speaking fees are going to be a lot lower with dropshipping. And at the end of the day, when it comes to somebody that has absolutely no money to get started, you can get started in dropshipping for free. If you wanna learn more about how to start dropshipping for free, just check out this video right here. It tells you everything you need to know. That video will also be linked down in the description below. And you'll also have the option to click on it all the way at the end of this video. So just make sure you finish this video before clicking onto that one. Another thing you need to take into consideration is, do you wanna get started now? Or do you mind waiting a little bit? Remember when it comes to Amazon FBA, you need to be approved, especially when you wanna sell in different categories. When you wanna get started in dropshipping, if you want to start in an hour, if you can get your shop set up and find the product you want to sell, you can get started within the hour. One big, big thing that I also want you to keep in mind is the fact that the customers that you're targeting with your Amazon FBA business versus the customers that you're targeting with a dropshipping business are not going to be the same. I don't know why people keep comparing the two thinking, oh, my customer is going to think if I'm dropshipping a product, I could find this cheaper on Amazon. Well, that's not the customer that you're trying to target. So the customers that you're trying to target when it comes to Amazon FBA is, of course, Amazon shoppers, which is pretty much almost everybody but there's also this demographic of people called impulse buyers me being one of them i'm very guilty about that <laughs> so what an impulse buyer is they see an item and they think wow i need this right now and they make the purchase those are the people that you're trying to target when it comes to drop shipping the impulse buyers are the main target audience for drop shippers that's why you hear on and on when it comes to product research that people say make sure that you choose a product that has one a huge wow factor and two provides value in someone's life because the combination of the two can trigger somebody's impulse to actually make the purchase. Impulse buyers don't think I'm going to find this on Amazon for cheaper with faster shipping. No, an impulse buyer is going to look at a website and they're going to think this looks really cool and they're going to make the purchase. That is your target audience when it comes to drop shipping. That's not your target audience when it comes to Amazon FBA. And the people that shop on Amazon is not your target audience for drop shipping. Please always keep in mind that these are two completely different demographics. It's two completely different demographics of people. So that was my comparison between Amazon FBA and drop shipping. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. I want to hear your thoughts about this. I want to know what you think about drop shipping or about Amazon FBA. Let me know which one you think is best, which one you think is best for you and which one you've started or which one you're planning on starting. I really want to hear your thoughts about this because I'm really curious to know what other people think. So just go ahead and drop them down in the comments below and let me know. Beside that though, that's pretty much the end of this video. Huge thank you to everyone for watching. If you found this video informational, if you like it, if you found it helpful, please make sure you smash that like button and make sure you ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Now with that, my name is Mario with Out of DS and I'm out.